This episode is sponsored by Nautilus. Go to nautil.us slash microcosmos to receive 15% off your membership. Hello, and welcome. You may have noticed that I am not one of your regular hosts, and you are correct. My name is Sarah Suda, and you can normally see me over at Bizarre Beasts. But I heard that James, our master of microscopes, had found something a little more macro than usual, and I wanted to take a look. I actually spent a good number of years looking through dissecting microscopes at everything from beetles to mosquitoes, and I'm excited to see what he found at an even greater magnification. Whenever we venture together into the microscopic world, as we often do on this channel, we never fail to find both beauty and mystery in equal measure. It's pretty much the only guarantee we have when we point our microscope at a new sample. We don't know exactly what we'll see, but we know it will leave us enchanted and full of questions. And the particular beautiful mystery that we're exploring in this episode came to us via an unlikely source, a gang of ruthless cats. Let me explain. See, a little while ago, James found himself with a bit of a problem. He was keeping some wheat grains at home to use as food for the microbes that he cultures and films for our enjoyment. But before he could feed the grains to his microbes, they became infested with the larvae of moths. And while James worked to find the infestation, his pet cats took it upon themselves to deal with the situation in their own way. What you're looking at now, bursting with color like the northern lights, are the wing fragments of some moths that were slain by James's cats. Because what does a microscopist do when they find themselves with an unexpected abundance of moth wings? Well, you guessed it. They place the fragments under a microscope and attempt to reveal their secrets, of course. But what could be that complex or enigmatic about something as everyday as a moth wing? It turns out the wings of moths contain many secrets that science has yet to fully explain. Like, for example, the reason behind this mesmerizing fluorescence unfolding in front of us. After all, you would be forgiven for generally thinking of moths as rather drab, as far as insects go. They're not the most vibrant or dazzling of critters to our eyes. But it turns out that perception is more a result of the limitation of our sight than of their actual appearance. Because under ultraviolet light, the wings of these moths glow like an aurora. Both how and why this happens, no one is honestly entirely sure. Perhaps by exciting the wings with high-energy UV light, their scales release fluorescent particles into the water of the sample. These particles absorb UV and re-emit the energy as visible light in the form of vivid greens and oranges, allowing us to glimpse the hidden beauty and vibrant coloration that, under normal circumstances, would be totally invisible to us. And because the wing scales themselves are hydrophobic by nature, the water bursts with mists of fluorescent particles, resulting in the waves of light we see here. Another idea is that the wing scales have some sort of innate UV reflection or absorption properties. And what we're seeing are cones of light reflected by the deforming nanostructures that are responsible for those properties. See, it might be surprising to learn that the overlapping microscopic wing scales of moths and butterflies are actually one of their defining features. Their scientific name, Lepidoptera, is a reflection of this characteristic trait. It literally translates to scaly wings. 
You might have even noticed this before. If you've ever held a butterfly or moth, they might have left behind a fine powder on your hand. That powder is made up of hundreds or thousands of these wing scales, which we're looking at right now at high magnification. And the intricate, complex nanostructures that line the scales of their wings have been found to have some interesting advantages. For example, they play very strange roles in their struggle for survival. Some species possess elaborate nanostructures on their scales that interact with sound rather than light, providing them with a form of sophisticated acoustic camouflage. For tens of millions of years, they've been targeted by echolocating bats that zero in on prey by bouncing sound waves off their bodies. So, in response, the wing scales of some moth species have evolved to absorb these sound waves, cloaking their acoustic signature from unfriendly ears. Perhaps the wing structures we're looking at now, which interact with light waves, also evolved for a similar defensive role in this species, scattering light as a means of visual camouflage or dazzling and obscuring the sight of potential predators that can perceive certain wavelengths. Though, unfortunately for these particular moths, it clearly doesn't work against cats. But predator avoidance is just one of many possibilities. Lepidoptera are an ancient and diverse bunch, and their scaly wings are adapted for a range of functions that we're only just beginning to understand. Some seem to use their UV-reflecting wings not to hide or confuse, but the total opposite, to communicate. Like many other insect groups, but unlike us, the eyes of Lepidopterans are exquisitely sensitive to the UV part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's the reason why researchers and hobbyists will often collect them by shining a UV blacklight against a sheet of fabric drawing in a range of species from far and wide. And various Lepidopterans are thought to use their UV perception and manipulation abilities to signal amongst each other for mate attraction, species recognition, and other secret messages we can only guess the meaning of. So, maybe the aurora we're gazing at is more like fragments of a language that we can't decipher, brimming with information that only other moths can comprehend. But the truth is, we simply don't know. For now at least, the beautiful mystery of this Mothwing Light Show reveals just one clear message. We still have so much left to learn. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And thank you to Nautilus for sponsoring this episode. Nautilus is the science magazine that brings the wonders of the universe to your fingertips. In a world of complex ideas, Nautilus simplifies science so that everyone can understand. And Nautilus explores a vast array of captivating topics, including art, anthropology, geology, physics, and more. Renowned scientific minds and literary giants alike contribute to Nautilus, enriching its pages with their expertise and creativity. Whether you prefer a digital-only membership or the print edition, rest assured that you'll have full access to all the wonders Nautilus has to offer. But that's not all. You'll also receive exclusive benefits like priority access to events, along with discounts on exclusive products. You can become a member at the URL on the screen and embark on a journey that will expand your mind and ignite your curiosity. Memberships to Nautilus seldom go on sale, but if you go to nautil.us slash microcosmos right now, you'll receive 15% off your membership. Those names you're seeing on the screen right now are some of our Patreon patrons, and they are the reason that this show can exist. If you'd like to join them in supporting Journey to the Microcosmos, you can go to patreon.com slash journey to micro to get weekly wallpapers and monthly uncut videos. If you'd like to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, you can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you'd like to see more from us, there's probably a subscribe button somewhere nearby. 